We're live from the HCC TV studios this morning. You're watching Up to the Minute, and I'm Todd Duplantis. Thanks for being here. It's the 28th of February. Hard to believe we have made it through yet another month, and the rodeo starts today. Boy, hard to believe that, too. It's been two years since we've had the rodeo, so it's good to see that back up and running. And uh, we've got the last day of this month to, uh, to move through till we get to March, and we know what March means. It means, well, of course, March Madness, but it also means spring break, two weeks away, so you'll enjoy that. Uh, we'll have more on that throughout the next uh, few days. But right now, my co-host, Dr. Tony Rayo sutherland joining me this morning. Tony, did, are you planning on going to the rodeo this year? Oh, absolutely. I already have my tickets. Uh, March 3rd, I'm going to see King and for King and Country. So oh, wow. Big okay. Uh, concert uh, yeah, going yeah. on. I'm Very big ready. band. I love that's them. right. I love them. <laughs> all right. So that's happening today. And I uh, want to thank all of you who are watching us on Facebook Live and YouTube. Thanks for being here. You can catch us just about every morning at 10 a.m. when HCC is in session. If you miss the show live, no problem. Watch the rebroadcast on HCC TV. You got three chances each day, noon, 5, and 10 p.m. You can also watch us in social media just about any time, Tony. Anytime you want to, it's kind of like on demand, as they say. Uh, just go to Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. We're there, but just look for Houston Community College District. There are a lot of HCCs, but there's only one Houston Community College District, and you'll find us there. That's right. Okay, Tony, stick around because you'll be interviewing this next guest. We've got a student success story. Alexis Johnson joins us this morning. Alexis, good morning to you. Good morning. Good to have you with us. Thanks for being here. You are a studio art student. Is that correct? I am. All right. So we're looking forward to hearing all about the program and your story as well. So stick around. We'll be with you in about 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. We're going to kick things off. It is hashtag mental health Monday. We do this uh, once a month and this morning is no exception. We've got Roxanne Francis. She is a counselor at HCC's Southwest College and she's our mental health Monday guest. Good morning, Roxanne. How are you? Good morning, Todd. I'm doing well. How are you this morning? We're doing good. And by the way, say hi to our, our fellow employees there at uh, your office, because I hear they arrived, caused some confusion because you're on the air with us. And then you yes. got a, a crew shooting some video for you guys there today. Yes, we are rocking and rolling over here in the counseling department. <laughs> well, I want to ask you, let's begin with a more widespread view of mental illness. You know, the mental illness, the subject has been really in the news over the past couple of years. Um, and maybe we, you can tell us about stigma surrounding it because, you know, we can have the discuss discussion all you want, but no one wants to be the first to say, you know what, I may be suffering from something. Right. You're right, Todd. So, you know, the, mental illness being in the media, social media, um, you know, our generations now being more open to saying, you know what, I just don't feel quite well and I'm not functioning quite well. That's actually what we need. Um, a lot of the stigma that is surrounded around mental health, is mental illness and mental health is that, you know what, I'm going to be okay. Or especially for the black community, or I'll work through it. Or um, there's a saying, what happens in this house stays in this house. And some of those stigmas and how those stigmas and those family traditions um, have hindered families and hindered individuals more than they've helped. And so what we're starting to see now is more people of all ages, not just necessarily our younger generations, but individuals of all ages in the Black community speaking out, saying more, um, using their platforms, whether that's social media or the media, using those platforms to really speak out and voice that they're not doing okay and they're okay with getting help for that. Are members of the Black community beginning to speak out against the stigmas right now? You mentioned it briefly, but is that something you're noticing more? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what we see is that you can touch more people through social media. I mean, we've seen it. We're seeing it now. You can touch more people through social media, and you can touch more age groups through social media. And the more that we talk about it, the more that it is in the media, the more that you know, we wear those T-shirts and we have those hashtags. The more that we do those things, the more that we can get 
the voice out and get the word out that it's okay that you need help and it's okay that maybe you haven't functioned um, as highly or function as well as you have in the past, but there's help out there for you. You know, you hear this in the news, especially it's come to light over the past couple of years, and it's not just the black community, it's across the board. But, you know, families may have an issue with one family member, but they keep it to themselves, you know, and they know the family member has episodes, but then one episode gets extremely violent, police show up, and then the situation just completely goes sideways and becomes very tragic. Um, how do you deal with a situation like that? from preventing it to happen uh, because obviously mental illness is involved in some shape or form in many of those cases. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Todd is education is key. Um, I'm a huge advocate for education, knowing, like you said, knowing where to start, where do we start? What are the preventative measures? So within Harris County, we have what are called our CERT unit. That's um, C-I-R-T. That's our crisis intervention response team. These individuals um, are search, cert, cert, certified, excuse me, mental health professionals within the HPD community. And what they do is they will know and they'll be able to recognize um, somebody that's maybe having a bipolar episode, someone that perhaps is having a schizophrenic episode. And so those are who you want at the front line. Not to say that our officers that aren't search trained right. aren't just as efficient, but these particular officers can recognize those mental health symptoms early on and take those preventative measures so that an episode does not ex escalate to something bigger. I know you're at the West Loop campus. Um, I imagine you see students on a daily basis. Students now are beginning to return to our campuses. Is life getting back to normal for our students? Are you seeing um, some post-traumatic stress syndrome from the pandemic with our students from the ones you're talking to? Absolutely. Um, perhaps even, you know, some students that maybe were managing pretty well with their anxiety, let's say, you know, that they were doing pretty well, um, now having to deal with the fact, okay, I'm going to be back around people. Um, you know, where have they been? Have I been somewhere that I shouldn't have been? And the feelings that come with that, as well as depression. You know, we've had to, um, you know, stay away from some of our loved ones, um, you know, family, friends, those types of things, and how the depression can impact that um, with having to stay away. So what we're seeing now is students returning to campus. Um, some are managing well. Some need a little bit extra help. And so that's what we're here for, to get them the help that they need, to make sure that they know that we are available and we are here, as well as to get them the education that they need. You know, that first step. Maybe that first step is just kind of looking at that pamphlet and knowing where to go for mental health services and mental health treatment, but also knowing that you have that support here on campus as well with our counseling services department throughout all colleges. Well, I wanted to ask you that next, because can any student, if they're just thinking, you know what, I need to talk with someone, uh, do they just schedule an appointment with you or can they just come there directly and, and speak with someone? Both. Both options are available. Um, as I stated, we are here and we're here to help. So yes, we do take appointments, but we also have walk-ins as well. At any given point, we may have a student that comes in and with or without a crisis, and we are definitely here to help. So if a student, you know, is just kind of passing by or has passed by one of our suites uh, frequently, please come in. We are here to help. So walk-in or scheduling appointments, we are here. You know, you look around, even though we're trying to get back to normal and just from a, a personal standpoint, you look around, it seems like the, the world's going to hell in a handbasket really quickly. You know, how does this affect our students? And then another thing people worry about right now are finances. No matter where you are in life, you've got to be concerned over the times right now. Is that are those two concerns uh, something that are popping up with our students that are more prevalent now? You know, we're all feeling it, right? And so, you know, you go to the gas pump to fill up that gas tank. You say, well, maybe I won't fill it up. Maybe I'll just do a quarter of a tank just to get me home. Yeah. You know, so we're all feeling it right now. Um, and so it, the same goes for our students. They are feeling it as well. We do have different resources available. Um, there's always different monies that are becoming available, different resources. We have our Eagle Market on different campuses. Yeah. And let's not forget, we also have the Houston Food Bank. ATC has partnered with the Houston Food Bank, and we do have the Houston Food Bank on campuses as well. So students, please look out for those email blasts to see when your particular campus register to see when the Houston Food Bank will be on your particular campus. So yes, we have resources available. We are, are filling it, but whatever we can do 
here at ACC to make sure that we can lessen that blow or make things just a little bit easier within our capabilities. We definitely want to do that. Absolutely. Roxanne Francis, a counselor at uh, HCC Southwest College. Um, for resources and what's available to our students, we're going to put some links in our social media post. I know you guys are busy out there, Roxanne. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you for having me, Todd. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Thank you. All right. We're going to turn things over to Dr. Tony. And Tony, you've got a, a student success story that's joining you. Yes, and I'm excited to talk to her. Alexis Johnson, a studio art student and an HEC student success story. Welcome to the show, Alexis. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, I am definitely looking forward to looking at all of your artwork and talking about it. In fact, I saw some pictures. They they have that cartoonish flair to it. And I mm. like that. <laughs> my, yes, <I> my, <laughs> my dad was a sign painter, but he was also a, a cartoonist. He, he, Oh, really? Through it, you know, the cartoons. And so uh, I have a special liking for it. So I really like your work and you do it on t-shirts and things. Tell mm -hmm. us all about yourself. How did you get into this? What got you started? Why'd you come to HCC? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So um, I started out um, just painting on like shoes, pants, you know, anything I could pretty much get my hands on because it was cheap, affordable, you know, it was fun. So then I wore it to school back in high school, like two years ago. And um, people were like, oh, my gosh, like, that's so cool. Like, can you make me one? And I was like, of course I can make you one. Like, I'm having fun with it. You know, let me just <laughs> do one real quick, give you one. And so, yeah, that's kind of how it started. And then um, I came to HCC because you know, it's the middle of a pandemic. I want to be close to home and everything. So I decided to stay. And now I'm on my second semester, my second year at HCC. Oh, wonderful. Well, now, um, how is HCC and the studio art department helping you? Um, it's really helping me a lot because things I've never tried, like charcoal drawings or like um, painting, ceramics. Like I've never done any of those things before, like outside of like just the painting on clothes or something. So um, yeah, it's really opened me up to like different things to try. That's good. And um, tell us a little bit about your art pieces. You know, uh, we have a bunch of pictures that I think are just <laughs> outstanding. So tell us a little bit about them. What, is there a story behind them or anything? <laughs> um, most of them don't really have stories. I just do it because I enjoy it. But like sometimes people might commission one to me to, you know, do because of a certain reason, like maybe somebody passed on or maybe it's for like a wife or a girlfriend, husband, you know, something like that. And um, yeah. I know I, there's one I saw it says, May this time your fall be a flight or something like that. Yes, I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, I, I was thinking maybe you had there was something behind uh, putting that piece together. Um, yes, ma'am. It's really to help like other people. You know, some people they're going through a hard time, so you might not want to talk to them. But if they see your shirt, you know, you're walking around in a grocery store or something, and they're just like, "Wow, like that really helped me today." I love it. I love it. Now. I, I see that you do mostly T-shirts, but mm -hmm. what else do you do? <laughs> Church, jeans, shoes, jackets, you name it. Like, if it's a clothing item, I can do it. Excellent. Now, you do other things besides clothing, too, right? Yes, ma'am. I can also make cards for the clothing. So, like, it's a one-stop shop. You know, if you have, like, a birthday party you have to get to and you want to order something, you can get, like, a T-shirt. I can make you a card with it. Bam. All you have to do is sign it and you're good to go. Oh, that's wonderful. So you've got a business going, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, so you're going to get an associate degree, I think, in studio art. So mm -hmm. what are you planning after that? Um, I plan to go to a four-year university and get my bachelor's degree. And um, after that, I'm not too sure yet, but I hope it's going to be something good. Maybe continue what I'm already doing. Okay. And what is your advice to other students? Um, if you're first coming, if this is your first time coming to HCC, then, you know, um, I say come with the open mindset because 
Um, for me, like a lot of people here aren't really my age. Like it's a few people, but a lot of people are like older in my classes. So, you know, um, it's, it, it's different because like, you know, high school, you're in high school, everybody's your age, but you get to community college or maybe college in general. And um, there's going to be people older than you, maybe younger, but um, yeah. So just come with an open mindset and it's a really good opportunity to learn new things. Hey, Alexis, I've got a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. Looking at your art, have you had any thought of maybe doing animation? Um, I have. I actually did animate something, but it's like really time consuming and it's really hard. Like, yeah, I think I would have to have like lessons or something on it because self taught is like not it for animation for me. Well, you know, they've got these computer programs where you just make your drawing and that'll animate it for you, you know. And really? You know, point, a to point B. Yeah, that's the, it seems to be the new way of doing things. The reason I'm asking, because when I was in college and Tony mentioned her dad was in, was in uh, a cartoon artist, mm -hmm. I took a course on the history of animation and it was just fascinating where it talks to you about everything from the beginning of Mickey Mouse up until the Simpsons, you know, um, mm -hmm. where it talks about the styles of animation and how tech... Now you could probably have a whole new course on how technology helps you with animation. But looking at your art, I was just wondering if that's something that has an interest for you. Yes, sir. I've tried it, but it's like not easy for me. Well, don't give up on it. I can see some of your characters with its own with your own TV I, show. For I yes, I love those characters, and and you put you put little sayings with them. So that's why I'm saying <laughs> you've got to be stories. With yeah, things behind mm -hmm. me. Yeah, keep in mind, the guy who started The Simpsons did it on a lark. He just kind of drew things himself, and it's turned into, what, a 31-year-old cartoon, and he's a multi-billionaire mm -hmm. at this point, you know? So uh, don't give up on animation if you uh, if you get a chance. You seem to have the, the, the look for it. And and have you thought about going eventually to the uh, our entrepreneur uh, uh, group? Uh, because, you know, you're, you've got a business going, but you know, they can help you improve on your business on, mm -hmm. yeah. on how to advertise for it, how to sell, how to, um, you know, how to market it and everything, how to market, you know, yeah. I know a lot of artistic people, they do great in the art world, but when it comes to the business end of it, that's when they need a little help. And that's where the entrepreneurship, uh, can really help. Mm -hmm. So it's, well, definitely. it's, it's a thought. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Alexis, thanks for being here and showing us your art and giving us a little bit about your story. We appreciate you Yeah, joining thank us. you for having me. All right, Alexis Johnson, she's with the Studio Art Program, one of our students here at HCC. Thanks for being here. All right, Tony, we've got a couple of things we want to move on and talk about. First things first, you know, we mentioned this at the top of the show. We can't uh, not mention it because they're a big partner with our scholarships. But the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, which is better known as Rodeo Houston, you know, they provide a lot of money for our, for our students through the uh, Public uh, Safety Institute out at the Northeast College. But the rodeo kicks off again today. So uh, it's good to see them back up and running. Of course, the last couple of years they uh, weren't able to have it because of COVID. Oh yes, I'm so happy that they're back, and it affects so many people uh, here in Houston, uh, and businesses, individuals. I mean, it brings so much money, at economics, and just the the sheer joy and pride that it brings along with it. Yeah, and don't forget over the last couple of years, it was really tough on these kids because they buy these animals, they raise them, you know, to show them off at the livestock show. And uh, last couple of years, they haven't been able to do that properly. This year, they're getting back to it. So congratulations to all of them. I know they're all very excited about this thing kicking off. Okay, uh, it is Black History Month all throughout February, and the Black History Celebration Through the Arts, a collaboration between the Music Department and the Office of Student Life. Uh, this is an event that features HCC Music, Students, and Faculty, the HCC African Dance Ensemble, and guest artist dancer Jarrell Lawyer Jefferson will be on hand tonight. It happens tonight online through Zoom, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. You want to join them live? Well, we'll give you a link in our social media post after the show. We were talking at the top of the show about food insecurity and how really that, that is an issue. You know, we're paying more for gas these days. 
Don't know when that's going to stop. Inflation's going up. So food insecurity is a real thing, Tony, but we are trying to work with the food bank to combat this. Yes, the, the Houston Food Bank trailers are still at HCC. I believe today is the last day because of uh, it's the last day of February, but take advantage of it. Just uh, go online and Choose which campus, date, what time you want to pick up the food. And we'll have uh, a post about that in, uh, in our show after after the show. So um, check that out. Don't don't be shy. Go ahead and, and get what you need. It's there. You might as well Absolutely. use it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We can all use a little help. Okay. Saves you money. Uh, you recognize that phrase. Mattress Mac. He is an icon really nationwide these days. Uh, well, he's teaming up with HCC for HCC's Northwest Center for Entrepreneurships. They're presenting Mattress Mac School of Selling that you get free virtual sessions, six of them, again on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, tomorrow, 10 a.m. to noon, there's a session on listening. All right. 10 a.m. to noon, Thursday, March the 3rd, this coming Thursday, there is a session on persistence. That always pays off when you're trying to sell something. Uh, we'll have the link in our post after the show. You can check them out for free. Yeah, people don't realize just how much listening and being persistent is part of selling. And it's even part of, of being a teacher because <laughs> you're trying to sell them what you're, you know, what you're trying to teach them. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, we are having a number of podcasts you can watch virtually. Uh, the video podcast on Facebook Live, YouTube, also on their website. Uh, and it continues 1130 to noon this Thursday, March the 3rd. The topic is differing and equal. The guests will be Dr. Be Becky Hari, the lead counselor of our counseling department, and Ms. Cynthia De Los Santos, the counseling, she's with counseling and disability services. So check them out this Thursday. We'll have a link on where you can watch it in our social media post after the show. And there is a, uh, let's see, there's another celebration going on, I believe, let's see, at the West Loop campus, Tony. Yes, uh, Tuesday. That would be tomorrow, March 8th at 3.30 p.m. Now try a week from tomorrow. Oh, March I'm 8th. sorry. I'm, I'm trying to move us along. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. A week ahead. <laughs> Don't get ahead. I know spring break can't come fast enough I, for you. Trust me. I'm, it. I'm trying to I'm get there with closer. you. I hear you. <laughs> okay. Dr. Liana Snarzo <laughs> is uh, going to discuss uh, the representative Bella Abzug, who is called the most recognizable woman in politics in the 1970s, which the United Nations called the decade for women pushing LGBT rights, universal child care, and green energy. Abzug led her peers through issues familiar to our own. And so as uh, Dr. Uh, Zarno will be here at 3.30 p.m. Tuesday, next Tuesday, more tape at the HCC West Loop campus. Okay. All right. Uh, community learning. Next time somebody tells you that's a bunch of rubbish, well, tell them you've got rubbish. Compost. You can learn how to make it. Everybody needs it. You can always use compost. Uh, well, HCC's Northwest will present another green thumb gardening workshop via the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Program. Learn how to make compost. Uh, 10, 10 o'clock to 11.30 a.m. Monday, March the 7th. That's next Monday for those keeping score. Uh, hey, it is online. Yeah. Rubbish is good. Rubbish is good. Rubbish. You know, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> You can recycle a lot of that garbage you're throwing away. So you uh, turn it into compost. Uh, we'll have a link in the social media post after the show. You ever thought of being an adjunct for HCC? Well, here's your chance. We've got a career fair coming up for them. Yes, uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Saturday, March 26. So be prepared for that. Learn more about it in our post after the show. But we are looking for, HCC is looking for adjunct professors. And you can be interviewed on the spot. So when you go Saturday, be ready to be interviewed and hopefully get a job. That's exactly right. And uh, dynamic demonstrations, student art winners, an exhibition of the winning art in diverse mediums from the district-wide student art Instagram show will be on view in person. That's right. You don't have to just watch them on Instagram. You can now go in person. This time it's at the Central Gallery at our Central College uh, through April the 9th. 
that goes on at the Fine Arts Gallery at HCC Central. Registration's not required. If you've got any questions, we'll give you an email address in our social media post. So let me get this straight. If you want to get classes before spring semester ends, you want to get some hours credit, you've got one eight-week session left. Now, I know it's very accelerated, but you could literally knock out three, six, nine hours, maybe even more if you're real diligent about it. But you have to sign up soon because the classes start right after spring break. Uh, we've got five ways to learn, Tony. Yes, online anytime, online on a schedule, hybrid, in-person, hybrid lab. Those are all different ways. But uh, like Todd was saying, you need to register now, especially if you want that uh, spring eight-week course that starts right after spring break, which is coming up. And it is accelerated. So, you know, be think about, you know, when you take this, you're gonna, it's going to be fast, but it's also a good way to get your credits out of the way. Yeah, yeah. So be thinking about it. Go to hccsedu slash apply to uh, register right now. Make sure you do so. And if you're worried about finances, you still have time to get some financial aid, scholarships, grants, all that stuff's on the table. Just register. Okay, tomorrow on the show, uh, it's Women's National History Month. Yes, Dr. Malika Martin of the fundamentals of Houston. And I said that because that way, because it's fun, if you win, the mentals of education. Uh, anyways. Yeah, it's a, so it's she'll be on, on the words. show. <laughs> yeah. It's a play on we'll words. Kick okay. off. Play on words. So tune, tune in for that. Uh, also, it's Tasty Tuesday, and we'll feature Wild in the Heights. They have got some uh, cocktail ideas infused with, well, we'll talk all about it tomorrow. So you're going to want to be here for that. Very interesting show. Yes. I'll be back. Uh, Tony, you're going to be here tomorrow, right? Yes, I am. I'm excited. <laughs> I get all that right, so background. <laughs> Tony will be here at the studios. Uh, anything can go on tomorrow. So make sure you tune you in. Go. It'll it'll be interesting. <laughs> all right. We'll see you tomorrow live 10 a.m. right here for Up to the Minute. 